It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. My country is very fortunate to have free speech on a governmental level because free speech, as we know it right now, is highly protected by the First Amendment. However, even though free speech is protected by the First Amendment, it seems as though that every single day there has been news on college campuses or the giant corporate media companies for social media or at the local level where free speech slowly but surely is getting destroyed each and every other day. And so when I first heard about the news about what Will Smith has done to Chris Rock, I was very concerned about the direct implications about all of this. Now before we talk about this whole entire thing, let's first talk about the data and we got to the whole entire Oscars. Now, according to the data, the viewership for the Oscars is at an all-time low. In 2010, about 41.62 million people watched the Oscars. And as we get closer and closer and closer to 2021, less than 9.85 million people have watched the Oscars. So, as the years pass on and on and on, less and less people are watching the Oscars. Now what can be a direct possibility on why people don't really watch the Oscars? Now for starters, I would say more and more speeches are becoming just more politicized because there's like not a single award show that happens nowadays without some sort of politics or reference to politics. And so when people watch the Oscars, they watch their favorite directors winning the awards. They watch their favorite producers winning the awards, their favorite actors or actresses or composers, any kind of person that they admire, that's the main reason why people watch the Oscars. However, when it comes down to politics, it's very divisive in nature. And so more and more people are gonna feel alienated by hearing about political stuff all the time. Now, the biggest news that came directly from the Oscars was that Will Smith hit Chris Rock for telling a joke. To provide further context for the clip, Jada Pickett Smith is suffering from hair loss, and so all her hair is pretty much gone because of this whole entire condition. And of course, Chris Rock made a direct reference to the movie G.I. Joe, in which more or less he was also bald. And so prior to Will Smith starting to attack Chris Rock, many people speculate that Chris Rock had no idea about the condition in which Jada Pekka Smith is suffering from. When I saw that clip for the first time, I felt the whole entire situation has just opened up Pandora's box. Way before, of course, all this happened, Many people decided to punish Nazis as a direct result of Richard Spencer getting hit in the face by the Antifa member. And so a lot of people were a direct target of anti-fascist violence from the supposed Antifa. Equally, of course, Count Dankula was also persecuted by the government for like Great Britain. And he was also arrested for making a joke about the Nazi pug. And so, when I see something as awful as this, first and foremost, I don't think of course it's okay to just use violence just because you don't like the speech. If you really do not like the speech of a person, then violence is never the answer. If Chris Rock and Will Smith are really that close and are really friends, Perhaps after the whole entire joke part, they could possibly just talk about how offensive that joke is. Talking it out in dialogue is way more productive about jokes or things that you find offensive because you never are going to just change somebody's mind by just simply just punching them directly in the face. And also, millions and millions of people are fans of the Oscars, they are fans of Will Smith, and so if they saw that their role model is punching somebody, a comedian, just because 
they said in an offensive joke, do you guys not understand that once you open Pandora's box, that more and more people can just possibly just go to comedy clubs and just punch celebrities just because they find a joke offensive. And so, once you open that box, it will never close. And I'm telling you guys right now, if more and more comedy clubs have reports of people just hitting comedians just because they're offensive, that to me is because of this whole entire incident. Now, according to the news, the Academy Awards is actually considering to ask Will Smith to hand back his award for his conduct. But what's just so strange to me is that they're saying that conduct is the exact reason why they want the award back. But at the same time, that did not stop them, of course, from, you know, calling out the people who have seriously bad conduct in the past. Let's take, for example, Harvey Weinstein. Like, nobody in the Oscars went out their way to condemn Harvey Weinstein. Nobody in the Oscars went out their way to condemn, like, you know, Roman Polanski or whatever. And so there are plenty of bad faith actors within the Academy Awards for the board. Yet for some strange reason, they want to target, like, Will Smith because of his whole entire conduct. Like, Harvey Weinstein is known for having, like, rape. <laughs> Roman Polanski, again, has sex with a minor. But for some strange reason, the sting that's like really, really, really bad is him just punching Chris Rock of all the whole entire thing. Which is insane to me. Incredibly insane. But more to the point, speaking about, of course, like, you know, speech having consequences, whatnot. There was this black guy, I cannot remember his name, but what he did in the past was go to the KKK and he actually convinced like the people not to be racist anymore. And so dialogue is always helpful when it comes to this whole entire situation. Not to mention, of course, I don't think under any circumstances that violence is, all, is not really okay for any sort of offensive speech. Let's take, for example, someone saying the N-word against a black person. Of course, I condemn the speech because what happened toward that black person with that name calling, which is obviously terrible, right? But that does not give me the right to just punch somebody just because someone's speech is really bad. You have to actually convince people with your ideas why something is bad or not bad. Have some sort of self-control about speech that you have, of course, think is hateful. And so, I don't think that violence, under any circumstances, no matter how hateful the speech is, is ever justified. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.